In this video, I want to conclude our discussion of how we go about doing inference in maximum likelihood models when we're talking about an error in the population being normally distributed. So at the end of the last video, we derived an expression for our estimator for the information matrix, which is defined in terms of mu hat and sigma hat squared. And if I just sort of write out each of the individual components, we know the estimator for the information matrix is just the negative of technically the expectation of each of the corresponding terms, but we're not going to worry a bit about the expectation for this particular bit. And then we're going to have in the top left d2l over d mu square, which is just minus n, where I'm using little n here to indicate the sample size, divided through by sigma hat squared. Bottom left is zero, top right is zero, and then the bottom right is minus n over 2 sigma hat to the power 4. So that's our estimator for the information matrix. And because of the fact that this information matrix is itself diagonal, it's very easy to find the inverse of it. So the inverse of the our estimator for the information matrix is, we're going to write it like i of mu hat sigma hat squared to the power minus 1 is just going to be equal to, if I take the minus inside and multiply each individual bit by minus 1, and then I just invert the diagonal terms, I'm going to be left with sigma hat squared over n, 0, 0, 2 sigma hat to the power 4, divided through by n. So this is our inverse of the information matrix, and it is this which defines the Kramer-Rau lower bound. Okay, so how does this help us in the realms of inf uh, inference? So if we define a parameter vector, which I'm going to call here theta hat, as being our estimator for mu hat as having one component, as being one component rather, and the other component being sigma hat all squared. So this is our estimator, our maximum likelihood estimator for the parameter vector which we're talking about in this particular problem. Well, we know since we defined this parameter vector and through our discussion earlier that we can actually invoke the central limit theorem. And then if we rearrange it a little bit, we have that the theta hat maximum likelihood estimator tends at least asymptotically or approximately towards being normally distributed around the true population parameter vector theta and having a variance which is given by the inverse of the information matrix. And we can actually just replace this by the inverse of the um, estimator for the information matrix. So we're just going to write it just like that. Okay, so this seems to be sort of indicating we're making some headway, but what does this actually mean in this particular model? Well, because the fact that the off diagonal elements are zero in this model, essentially that means that the maximum likelihood estimators for the mean and the variance actually have no covariance. And because of that, we can actually consider the terms in isolation. So what we can write is that mu hat maximum likelihood tends, at least asymptotically, towards being normally distributed around the true population parameter mu with a variance which is given by or estimated by sigma hat squared over n. OK. so. That's definitely of use because we've got a defined variance here. And if we have a defined variance, um, asymptotically at least, we can do some sort of inference. OK, and then if we just complete this by looking at the sort of approximate behavior of sigma squared maximum likelihood, then we can see that this tends asymptotically towards being normally distributed around the true population parameter of sigma squared with a variance which is estimated by 2 sigma hat to the power 4 all divided through by n. And as I spoke about before, because we actually have a defined estimator for variance here, we can actually do some sort of inference. And we can do inference using sort of normal t statistics here, because we're just estimating the variance, and so we can just proceed just as we did before. So maximum likelihood inference isn't technically any harder than any other sort of inference we've been talking about. But it can be a little bit more involved in terms of deriving the, at least our estimator for the information matrix. So that's the only thing which we need to talk about.
and we're going to look at some further examples of this in the future.